Alright, what is up guys? I'm sorry that I've not posted in a while. I was actually trying to pull together a pretty cool experiment, but I've been having some delays with that. So, I checked my comments recently, and I saw that someone suggested that I should try to make a King of Random style graphite crucible furnace using Thermite as the heat source. So, that's what I'm going to be doing today, except since I don't have a graphite crucible, I'm actually going to be using those two steel cans you saw earlier, and I'll be putting sand in between them, and that will act as my graphite crucible. It should hold up okay. I'll be melting down aluminum today, so that's why I have that aluminum foil. Right now I'm rolling it all out, and I'm gonna fold it up and then roll it all up. That way I can get it into a nice ball, and I could smash that with a hammer to compact it. Hopefully that'll fit right inside of the crucible. So that's what I'm gonna be doing right now. And once I'm done, I'll show you guys what's next. Alright, so I just finished rolling up all of the aluminum foil, and I'm actually going to weigh it to see how much it is. And it looks like it's 270.8 grams. Then I realized I literally didn't need to do any of that, I just did. I can just use the roll like it's given, and just put that in. So, it's 493 grams from what I have left, after tearing off that big chunk. And without the cardboard in the center, it is... 472.7 grams which is just over a pound and that's perfect for the crucible and what i'm trying to cast so i'm going to try to get it into third so it'll fit and tin snips won't get through it so i'll get back to you when it's in thirds <laughs> Alright, so as you can see, everything fits nicely in the crucible, and our aluminum weighs 472.3 grams. And right now I'm just packing the foam into the green sand, and the shape is an ingot shape, like, you know when you see those gold bars? It's like that, but out of aluminum. So right now I'm just whipping up a quick batch of thermite, and then I'll be packing it into my little foundry thingy, which is actually a really heavy cast iron pot. And I added a bunch of steel plates and rocks just to like make it a bit smaller because I didn't want to use up a ton of thermite for this and risk melting the cans completely and putting holes in them and the aluminum spilling out. So that's why I did that. And as you can see, I actually changed orientation of the foam to make it a bit easier. And there's my setup. And you can see there's the sand I put in between the two steel cans. And now I'm lighting it. And here we go.
All right, guys, so as I was spraying water, the cast iron pot actually cracked, and it was extremely loud, but I didn't get that on film. As you can see, the steel plates began to melt. Even the outer steel can started to melt, but the aluminum didn't. So I'm gonna try again using the same method I did for my dagger. All right, so as you can see, the aluminum is still liquid, which does not actually happen with the copper since copper has a higher melting point, of course. And it's pretty fun just to experiment around and skim the top because I'm never going to do that with the copper. And I'm actually surprised because once everything stopped glowing, the aluminum is still liquid, and you can see that right there. So from here, I'll just be pulling the whole thing out, out of the green sand, knocking down all the slag and excess aluminum that I can to extract that cast. All right, so I just broke my cast free, and as you can see, there's still a lot of like excess aluminum and slag on it, so to get rid of that, I just took a hammer and a chisel, and I just knocked at that and just broke it all away, but I did not catch that on camera. And from here, what I'm doing is I'm just taking my ingot, and I'm just dragging and scraping it back and forth on the concrete, and just working at it until I can get out all those major imperfections. And I'm doing this because I don't have a power tool or a bench grinder to do this for me. And this actually takes a while. I, I would probably say it took me like 30 to 45 minutes of just grinding and scraping, going like a millimeter at a time. And if you look there, you can see all those marks on the concrete. And what I did is I took a dustpan and I swept up all of that and I got actually a significant amount of aluminum powder. So maybe in the future I could try doing aluminum foil thermite using that powder. So that'd be pretty neat if that works out. But the thing to do from here is I'm just taking a wire brush and I'll take sandpaper and just make it look as nice as I can on the outside. And yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that.
so my ingot weighs 245.4 grams. And that's not bad considering I put in a pound of aluminum for melting and I had 130 grams of excess that I can use to melt again, along with all of that aluminum dust that I swept off the concrete. So pretty much all of the aluminum was accounted for here in the melting process. And it turned out pretty good for a thermite cast. I mean, there's a couple imperfections on the sides, but it's not bad. And there's a neodymium magnet, and clearly it's not attracted to it or anything. It's not magnetic, and that means it's pretty pure because there's no iron contaminated in there or anything. So that is good. And the thing on the left there that you can see is actually that ball from the beginning. And what I did is I took a hammer and I just compacted that as much as I could until I got it into that small shape. And I just realized, you know, I could just use the roll. And then, yeah, that's about it for this one. So catch you in the next one.